when we when it's activated through the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to be teaching on just adding this to show you how to activate God's grace and God's blessing in and on your life. Amen. Because it's one thing for us to teach you about the grace of God, but we never show you how to activate it or how to cause it to come alive or how to actually make it happen in your life. You won't, you, you won't um, actually ever learn how to do it. You just be walking around quoting scripture but not seeing the result that the Lord has said you're supposed to get. Amen? Amen. 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 So we're going to make it plain today. Y'all ready? Amen. 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 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his confidence upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Now, I want to show you guys something. Look at that last verse. That last verse that we just read says, and they shall put his name on his children. So that, that, that's saying to us that although they are his children, his name is not on them. So it's possible, well, if, if what God is saying to us that you can be a Christian, saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit, but yet don't have his name on you. Amen. That's what that's saying. Yeah, I name the name of Christ. I testify that he's mine, but his name is not on me. Why is that? Because it's someone's responsibility to make sure that his name is on me. It's not his responsibility. Because if it was his, he wouldn't have gave the responsibility to someone else to do it. He said, tell them, and they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. What does it look like to put his name on the children of Israel? Well, let's look at John 1 and 1. John 1 and 1. We pray how? In the name of Jesus, right? We better instruct to pray to God in the name of Jesus, right? There's, there's no other name under heaven by better be called, right? Or say, right? There's power in what? The name. the name of Jesus, right? So he told us, or he told um, Moses to tell the priesthood that they're to put or place his name upon his people. This is what name he's talking about and how to do it. You ready? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things that were, all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. You see it? In Him was life, and the light was the light of men, and the light shined in darkness, and the light comprehended the night. Now, let's go on to um, verse 13. Which were born not of the which were fourteen. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, come back over to Numbers 627. He told them to put his name on his children. They literally put his word on the children. That's why when we when he tells us that we are blessed. He's putting his, his, his word in his name. Say it with me. Say God's word, God's word. is his name. It's his name. Jesus, Jesus and God, and God the, Father, the Father, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit are, one. are one. Jesus, Jesus is the same. It's the same. It's the, as the word. The word. the word was made flesh. The word was made flesh. And from among us. In the person, in the person of, Jesus. of Jesus. You got it? So anytime I want to put God's name on something, I must put his word on it. Amen. You got it? Amen. So if I want God's name on something, I put his word on it. Why is that important? Because he tells us that he's not a man 
that he should lie, nor is he the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he will make it good or bring it to pass. That's what he says about himself. That's his word. His word is not just bond. His word is true. His word is fact. His word is, is what it is. Okay? Meaning, I like to look at it like this. If, if God said the sun is shining and it, it is dark as midnight, the moment God said the sun is shining, you might as well get ready the sun's about to shine. It's no shine. Amen? Because he just put his name on it. He stepped into our situation, no matter how dark and gloomy they are, how long we've been in the situation, and he said, okay, this is what I'm saying, I need you to put my name on it. I need you to put my name on what I'm saying to you. Put say, say Lord, Lord, I've chosen, I've chosen to, put to put your name, your name on, everything on everything that you said, that you said it, is. it is. You got it? All right, all right, all right, all right. We're going to, we're going to track this one. Y'all ready? Yes. Go to Genesis 15. We was here Tuesday. I don't think we turned to it, but yeah, oh, maybe, maybe we did. I'm not sure if we turned there or not. I know I mentioned about from Genesis 15. Y'all ready? After these things, the one Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy seeding great reward. And Abraham said, Lord God, what will I give thee, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. Let's stop for a moment. God just showed up to Abraham and told him who he was to him. Right? And that's what he does for us. He will show up and announce himself. He will show up in, in our situation and he's, he's about to come and communicate. He's doing two things here. He's telling Abraham who he is but in the risk of him telling him, he knows why he's telling him because he knows Abraham is in a place in his heart where Abraham doesn't believe what he's saying to him. So Abraham, God said to Abraham, he's saying, look, I am your shield, meaning I'm your protector. And I'm also, the same time I'm protecting you, I'm rewarding you. But I'm rewarding you beyond what you can currently see, what you can currently think, what you can currently imagine. I'm rewarding you beyond that. And most of us can't even under comprehend God's reward because we're too focused on where we're, our current situation looks like. Amen. And that's the first thing that Abraham addresses. Abraham says, okay, God, see, it's like, and this is what we do. God is told to look, I am, I am. he said, I am, you will see this great reward. But he told him to fear not. Why didn't that tell him to fear? Because he's telling, you see, he's having a vision. No angel's not talking to him. Normally when he says fear not, that means an angel has appeared. We see in the Bible, correct? Right, right. We see when angels show up, we, we, we see the angel warning that person, hey, fear not. Right, right. So something comes off guard, right? right? But he's in a vision. Right. He's not in a, in, a, in, a, in a natural state where he's in a natural state being aware. So what's he fearing about? Let's just come him off, off guard here. You follow me? So we gotta address the fear in the room. We have to address the fear that God addresses. God says, fear not. Then he says to him, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. So, there is no angel here talking to him. There's God talking to him. God didn't just drop out of heaven. God placed him in a place of a vision. And many times God will bring us to a place of a vision and he'll deal with our fear because he says, okay, until you stop being fearful of this thing, I can't bless you here. Until you stop being fearful in this place, you can't put my name on it. Because you are, you are allowing the thing that's, that's causing fear in your life to be bigger than me. So that's all you think about, that's all you communicate about, that's all you talk about, and you're and you allowing your fear to cause you to lie on me. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. So God says, look, fear not. 
The thing you're worried about, the thing you, the thing you keep thinking that I'm not going to do for you, stop fearing about that. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but I'll put myself right there. There are some things in my life that I've been fearing about, that I, that I may be looking good to you all, but on the inside of me, I've been you know, walking in fear. And, I, and I've been worried about it more than I've been worried about what God has been saying. And God says, even in those things, I am that exceeding great reward. You have to protect you from all the naysayers that are speaking against it, that, 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 that's reminding you of, of what your situation looks like. I'm going to block those darts, those fire darts. Every time somebody throws slang at you, I'm going to be your shooter and take, and take the hit. Yeah. So that's, that's not what I'm telling you to do. You don't have to defend yourself. I'm your shield. Amen. I'm your shield. Don't worry about defending what somebody's saying about you. They don't understand what I told you in the vision. They don't understand um, what, what I minister to you about, what, 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 what I have other people preaching to you. They don't understand our conversation. This is a private conversation between me and you, Abel. Amen. Fear not. Because Abel was in a situation where it was just him and Sarah and their whole entire household. The household consisted of just him, Sarah, and all the servants. Amen. And he's become great. He has great substance. He has a lot of things that God has blessed him and given him at this particular time, but he has no one to leave it to and pass it on to. Amen. So that's it. His name will be wiped out of the earth. Mm-hmm. And that's a lot of us today. We've gotten, God has saved us, delivered us, cleaned us up, brought us to a great place, but we have not yet allowed him to, to bring the past. The, the, the air or the or the thing that he told us he wanted us to do, we haven't seen that come to fruition yet. So we get fearful. And we start walking in fear, trying to make up things that God didn't put, put there. So God said, let me have a conversation with you, Abraham. He says, fear not. Once and for all, fear not. Amen. Fear not. Let me show what that looks like. This is why you have to be very, very careful. And this is why I hope I was, I, I pray right now, I wish I was in a place where I didn't know none of y'all. Get no none of the situations. Get no none of the struggles you have. None of the challenges you have. I wish I didn't know any of those things. Because I could flow without you, without your mind thinking, without your mind getting away. But because I know some things, it's gonna, it, it, the, 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 the connection of you really being able to receive what the Lord is saying is a struggle there. So that's another challenge. That's why I ask that, I, that people don't Talk to me about certain things that go in their life. Let Holy Spirit talk to me about it because if you want me to tell you something, then you know you didn't talk to me about it. Amen. 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 So, let me show what happens when we start walking in fear. It's going to happen a lot of people. If God been telling you, I'm okay, I'll do it this way. Back in um, 97, God told me, He said, it's time to move forward with his driver's license. What are you talking about? And he said to me, he said, go ahead now and start paying off all of your old tickets. And so the first thing I did, I went to one place, found out the ticket, the amount of ticket was, they gave it to me. And I decided to go to all of them and get the, all the amounts. And the more I went, I, had, I think it was like four places. And the more I went, the bigger the tickets amount got. So I started getting fearful. So I, I was I was working about maybe $9 an hour at that time and, and trying to impress um me at the time. So I was trying to live, you know, beyond what you know what I had. But I had a vision with God on what he wanted to do. And so I said, well, I can put this on the back burner because she was really happy about me. She was taking me around. And she was doing it. Taking me around, make sure and, and I had people picked up for work. I was I was good. And, and, and I had to have my plan. I said, God, we can do this later because right now, you know, I got a plan going. She, no, no. She picking me up. Amen. Amen. She taking me where I need to be. All the people helping me out. You know, so we good. We good. Next thing I know, we got an argument. <laughs> I, I'm back. I'm back down to my dad's house. We're not talking no more. <laughs> I lost that job, <laughs> and now I'm like, oh, I'm back at square one again. <laughs> and then something happened. Something happened. He said, "Go outside, look in your dad's yard, 
and go point to that car that's just sitting over there. I give you this car. I spoke to that car. I kid you not. My father came to me two weeks later and said, when you get your license, I'm going to give you this car right here. Wow. I said, okay, Holy Spirit, I hear you. I went straight down, paid off that big ticket. Boom. Now I'm working. There. And now I'm communicating and saying everything that he's saying. Because now I'm putting his name on it. Come on. I put his name on it. Yes, so this is what we had to do. Go to verse 5. Go to verse 4. You ready? Or 15. You ready? And the whole world Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look up to one heaven and tell the stars. If thou be able to number them, he said unto him, him So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it, unto, and counted it to him for righteousness. So, I, I, I want to address something. There are a lot of different translations that, that just set up say that it says, and he said, count the stars. Well, that's half accurate. He did tell him to count the stars. But the King James broke it down and showed you that he told him to tell the stars and also count the stars. You see that? You see that? Some translations say he told him to count the stars, right? And that's, he did. But that's only part of the translation or part of the revelation that actually took place here. Yeah. Why is that important? Because when God speaks to us, he speaks to us from a place of revelation. He speaks to us from a place of, of, of who we are, meaning body, natural, right? Spirit, amen, and soul, which is our mind, our heart, and our will, and intellect, right? Yeah. So he's going to address us that way and he's going to speak to us from that place into that place of us, okay? Are you with it? So, when he tells him to um, tell the stars, he, we, we did an illustration on, on Tuesday how um, we use Maurice and how to tell the say some opposite of what God was saying. When I was trying to put my plan in place about how to get my license or put it to the side, I was lying. Okay. I was lying because I was fearful. And fear would cause me not to walk in faith, which would have me lying. Because anytime I say opposite of what God is saying, as a Christian, I'm lying. Amen. Amen? Amen? So because what God is saying is he's giving me his name to put his name on it. Amen. Right? So I had to begin to put my put his name on everything that my life was, 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 was everything in my life at the time. I had to learn how to put his name on it. So I had to listen to him and talk with him and get in conversation with him and, and begin to say what he was saying about my life. Amen? Amen. The problem was. I did not know where to address it. I didn't know where to address it. I didn't know who he was speaking to. I didn't have a clue what, who was fighting me. I would say that the cops, I'm in this situation because the police, you know, was, was profiling me. And then I, then I spent time saying, you know, I'm feeling this place because of my bad choices. And, and the, the, I can actually say that 100% of the second thing was more accurate than the first, right? Maybe the top breath was part of me because of the lifestyle I was living prior to you know, going to prison, but I can actually say that some of the things, or most of the things I was eating were because of my choices, right? right? But God said, son, you can't stay there. Mm. Amen. You can't stay there. You diagnosed the problem, but now it's time to shift. And let me show you how, what, how to get the answer and the solution of what I'm telling you you're supposed to have. And I was clueless. I didn't know what to do. So he kept taking me to Ephesians 6. Let's go to Ephesians 6. Let's go to Ephesians 6. I'm just simply walking you through an account of my life of what actually happened. Amen? Amen. These are actual accounts that actually took place in my life that helped me walk in, in, in the knowledge of the risen Savior and in the knowledge of what he's done in my life. Amen? These are true events, true accounts, amen? I'm not preaching you up from some of the message I got from YouTube or somebody else's word. I'm preaching you about what actually took place in my life, amen? amen. Are you guys there? Let's go to verse, um, 
Let's go to verse 10. Because I think for, for a long time, there, there have been some teaching on this. And it's probably some active teaching, I'm quite sure it has been, and it's, it's helped develop us at the, to the level where we are now. But we're going to, however, not use the word but, but however, we're going to allow Holy Spirit to give us more grace. Somebody say more grace. More grace. On this particular set of scriptures this morning. You ready? Amen. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I love how Paul brings a conclusion to study. Everything he said, he said, finally, my brother. Finally, man, this is the last thing that you should do is going to get these results. Ready? Right. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wild and devil. Now, we've all quoted these particular scriptures about how we ought to put on the whole arm of God, and I'm quite sure even as I just read that with you, we, um, you've already started talking about the shield of faith and the breastplate of righteousness in your mind, right? Yeah. You've already went there, right? And that's what most of us do. However, we, we go straight and put the with the weapons on of our warfare on, of the armor of our warfare on, and we just run slap past verse 12. Because we see what what good is to have armor if you don't know when you fight. Amen. Amen. Or who are you defending yourself from? And verse 12 tells us how where what not how to but where to engage at. Where the fight is at. So, if verse 12 tells me where the fight is at, then why am I fighting with Cut B? Over the credit bureau. Or even myself. Amen. If verse 12 is telling me where the fight is at, because for a while, I beat myself up. And I even put curses in my family, which were probably there. But, I, but understand something. I'm not telling you there's no such thing as a generation of curse. Right. What I am telling you that a generation of curse came from God cursing the people. Read the Bible. Amen. So God said, okay, I put this curse in there, and I'm going to honor it through the uh, fourth generation. I got to now come up with a plan to remove this curse. Right. So he said his son, by making him a curse, that whosoever believe on him would not have to be under the curse. Yeah. You got it? So if you don't be received Christ, then yet you're the curse. And then you receive Christ and don't receive the knowledge of how, why you're not under that curse, guess what? You are still probably under the curse. Not by God any longer, but by your unwillingness to learn. Does that make sense now? Are yes. y'all trying to get now? Yes. Okay. So we're going to learn today who we're fighting and where we're fighting at, where the fight is really at, okay? Okay? Okay. For well, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Let's stop right there for a moment. He just took us off of the face of the earth and put us up there in a place called the heavenness. He tells Abraham to not go outside and turn your attention from your steward of your house, from yourself. And put it in a place where the fight really is at. He don't tell us to count the stars, he tells us to tell the stars. Talk to them and tell them what I say. Right? Because that's what he does. He says, You tell them what I told you. Why is that? I gotta give you more Bible. I gotta give you more Bible. Because he, God, God understands how this thing really works. Abraham doesn't. So God said, if I'm going to, if I'm going to require him to put my name on every, everything that he possesses, including himself, I got to now teach him some things that he can't see. Amen. I got to show him, I got to show him stuff that he can't, he can't see. I got to open his eyes. So God took him outside and said, "Look at the stars." In other words, come look at Ephesians six and twelve, Abraham. The reason why you have this, you woke up this morning with this on your mind like this, is fear because Ephesians 6 and 12 is at work in you this morning. Mm -hmm. It's fighting against you this morning. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's Sarah. Do we don't see Sarah either. We don't see Sarah telling him, hey, I'm old. Hey, I can't produce for you. We don't have, we don't see him, we don't see um, Lot showing up saying, boy, look at my two girls. We don't see none of that. We don't even see Ellie Elzar pressing around trying to, trying to showcase his whole family to him, do we? But we see a man who heard a word from God said, go do something. The first thing that he tells God is, man, I, I, I don't know this right here. 
I went to heaven to keep a child. And here we are sitting here saying, what does what that do for me? Because this, this is our warfare every day. And we want to tell the truth about it. Amen. We sit around, and we sit in our homes, and we sit on the job, and, and we have and this one thing that God is saying to go do, and, you, and we just say, no, I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. No, but I'm, you know what? But this working out right here, I'm um, still driving me around, but that's how, that's how it's going to go down. Let me show y'all something that, that, that you have to be aware of. Go back to Genesis 6 real quick. Genesis 15 and 6. We're going to be turning a lot between these two, so keep your keep finger there. Amen. Genesis 15 and 6. Amen. Y'all there? Yes. Let me read for the second time. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. So what did he do that made God say he was righteous? He said what God said. He, he told the stars what God said. He told the stars what God said. He told the stars what God said. He told the principality what God said. He simply just said, this is what God said. And I agree with what he said. And God said, oh, now you're righteous. Now you're talking right. Now you're living right. Now you're walking right. Now you're acting right. Now you're being right because you are saying what I'm saying because you are putting my... See, in other words, put, put your name on me. Your name is... Um, well, I'm just going to get around. I'm just going to do it. I mean, you know, I, I, I ain't got the money. That's your name. His name is, I've already provided everything to protect the life and God that's for you in this situation. I've already blessed you with every spiritual heavenly blessing. I already give it to you. You are healed in Jesus' name. That's his name. But my name says, what comes out of me? Out of the words of the heart, the mouth speaking, right? As a man speaking in his heart, so is he, right? So who are you? Who are you? I am Christ. I am Christ. I am Christ. Me, I'm his. His name is on me. I'm the son of God. I'm the redeemer of the Lord. I'm the blessed of the Lord. I am rich. I'm forgiven. I'm a king. I'm the righteous of God. What's your name? The blessing of the Lord, the righteous of God, the righteous plan of God being revealed in the earth, the glory of God being revealed. That's my name. Turn it on Joshua chapter 5. Somebody say shift. Verse 13 to 15. You ready? Amen. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, there stood up a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay. But as captain of the host of the Lord, of the Lord, the captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come? And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. Now. There's a thing I want to point out about what actually took place here. And I'm going to start at the end. Once Joshua engages in conversation with this captain of the Lord's host, and the Bible doesn't really tell us who, who this person is, we can run down through different places and, and, and probably, put it, probably put a face to so Someone said, this is Jesus. You know, and I'm not going to say it is or it wasn't. Um, some would say this was one of the principality rules in that area. But we, the man himself, the captain, called himself the captain of the Lord's host. That's what he said he was, right? 
We do know that we have angelic hosts, right? Amen. Right? So, if we were to look at it, we could say he was a captain of a host. That we said he was. But he signified and he clarified whose host he was a part of. He said the Lord's host, right? Amen. One thing I want to point out as well is that when Joshua asked him who he was for, he said neither. I'm not for you or your adversaries. That caught my attention. He said he's, for, he's the Lord's host, the captain of the Lord's host, but yet he's not for me, nor is he against me, but neither is he for my adversary, or is he against them. That, part, that, 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 that made me wonder. And, I, and, I, and I'm like, oh God, why are we even having a conversation? He's going to help me fight. But he gives Joshua a set of instructions. He tells Joshua, he says, pay attention, because you, you, you're very unaware right now where you're standing. You're standing in a very, very holy, consecrated place unto the Lord. It's where you are. And you are you are you are you are defacing it. You are you are you are defaming it. You are you are making it unclean. You are disrespecting this place because you don't understand where you are, because you don't know where you are. So you are in a place that you are defaming it. You are in a place where you call it unclean because you still got your shoes on. And I'm going to help you align yourself with what God has done. So I mean, and it's going to be very simple. I just need you to acknowledge that the place you currently are right now is holy and you need to respect it. So take your shoes off. Take your shoes off. Now I'm going to explain that through the power of the Holy Spirit. We're going to explain that. Right? Let's go back on to Ephesians. Ephesians 6. Go to verse 15. So you don't get there. Do you have pages turning? Amen. Y'all ready? Yeah. Paul is writing. Well, let's look at verse 13. Let, no, let's look at verse 13. I'm going to read on and you'll, 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 you'll see. Y'all ready? Mm-hmm. For verse 9 is flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of, dark, of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Where will take up to you the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in this evil day. And have it all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with what? Truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet sh- and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Stop. He wants in Joshua at that moment to take off his shoes so he gives him the right shoes to put on. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say that He wanted Joshua to take off his shoes so he could give him the right pair of shoes to put on. Because up to this point, Joshua had shoes on for going and just fighting and taking over. If you, if you know anything about this text and this story about what happened in chapter 6, the very first fight that Joshua takes, takes on, he won't have to fight. He, he's, 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 he's told by, by the Lord to get up and go march around Jericho. Joshua at this point has no warrior shoes. He's ready to fight. But God is saying, I don't need you to put, have warrior shoes on. I need you to put on marching shoes. Because I need you to march around, this, around, around Jericho. You ain't got to fight. You ain't got to, you ain't got to fuss about it. But I want you to say something. And I, but I want you to say it when I tell you to say it. I want you to say it how I tell you to say it. I want you to say it when I tell you to say it. And if you got on fighting shoes, baby, then guess what? You know, I don't need you to give me fighting words for me to fight till I get my fighting shoes on. I'm ready to fight at a moment's notice. Amen? Amen. So I got my fighting shoes on. But if I got my marching shoes on, I'm going to wait on a command. Amen. Amen. I'm, I don't really the military, but I watch my, I'm, I'm, I'm not in military um, movies and stuff. And I see that when they, when they're supposed to get laced up, 
And then when they're marching, they got to wait on command. They get to start marching. They got to wait until they tell them to mark time. Until they tell them to go left or right. Am I talking right? You had to check your shoes. And you're sitting here trying to go fight this fight of go accomplish this dream or fulfill this vision, and you got the wrong shoes on. And you don't even realize that the, that the situation and the place you're in right now is a holy place. Yeah, it may be frustrating you, but guess what? That frustration has been sent because it's holy. That, that place where, where we have that trial and that temptation is there because it's a holy place. Take your shoes off. Take your shoes off. And let him put the proper shoes on you so he can give you the next direction of what he wants you to do. Because he's telling you to stand. And if you got the wrong shoes on, you won't be able to stand. You'll you, you, you run off before time. You'll run off and do something else. And he's telling you to stand and stand there for. Me, he's going to show you how to stand. Having your loins girl about in truth. What's the truth? Tell him to start what I said. Quit saying what you see. And tell him what I showed you. Quit, quit saying what you've been hearing and tell them what I told you. Amen. Holy Spirit, you're preaching. Amen. You're preaching better than better than better than anybody here saying amen. Holy Spirit, you're preaching. Amen. It worked for me, Holy Spirit. I, I'm going to continue that it worked for me. Amen. I'm going to continue that it worked for me because it works. Amen. Your own method and your word works every single time. Yes, there comes a time in your life when God will show you that what, he, what He wants you to do, and then He'll make you just stand in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. And the only thing will keep you standing there is the truth of God's word. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that again. The only thing that will help you stand in where God has told you to stand at is the truth of God's word. Having your loins girt about with truth, because there's a thing that'll come. And God will tell you to stand in it, and as soon as your mind goes to talking against it, you will give them right. You will. That's why you got to have the Lord's word about the truth, because that's how we stand. So, what, 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 what do you, let me break something down to you guys. You know why it's important that you have the Lord's word about the truth? You know why that's why so important? Because you're not standing now on yourself. A lot of us are standing on what somebody told us. We stand on a dream that we have. We stand on a promise that we have or, or, or a desire that we have or, or some money that we have. We stand on that. But I want to show you what we're supposed to stand on. We're supposed to stand on the foundation of God's word. Because God's word is the only thing that can make us stand on water and not sink. You don't believe it? Ask Peter. The Bible says that they was in the boat. And they was in the middle of the sea. And they was that the wind was the trailer against them. And they was afraid. And Jesus came walking upon them on the water, right? Mm -hmm. And when he got there, they thought it was a ghost, right? So mm -hmm. they got fear and they're crazy again, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens is this. They see him, he says, Fear not, it's me. And Peter says, If it is you, bid me to come. And he says one word, come. So Peter wasn't walking on instructions of water. Mm -hmm. He was walking on the word C-O-M-E. Come. Yeah. come to me. Come, 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 come to me, come to me, C-O-M-E. Mm -hmm. He was standing on that. He took one step, C. Next step on the O. Mm -hmm. Next step on the M. Next step on the, on the E. But when he took his eyes not off of, see, understand something, the Bible says his eyes off of Jesus, yeah. right? Yeah. John 1 and 1 said that Jesus and the Word is the same thing. Yeah. He took his eyes off of the Word, yeah. right? Yeah. And began to see. Yeah. We think we take our eyes off of the yeah. Word of God. Yeah. That's why he said, listen, go tell the stars what I say. Put my name on it. Yeah. Put my name on it. Put my Word on it. Put my Word on it. Put my name on it. Put my word on it. What do you tell us to do? It's good, Lord. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good, it's good Last thing I want to show you before I close. 
Turn to um, to Genesis 22 and 17. Genesis 22 and 17. Sorry for you know, speaking so fast, but Genesis 22 and 17. We got some people that are just praying in one dimension. And you're not and you're not getting the result that you're supposed to receive because you're not you're not you're not praying in in full harmony in the right dimensions and at the right time in the right places. So I'm gonna show you today what we're supposed to do and how we do it. This is something that I had to do for myself and it works. Amen? Amen. Amen. What I tell you, Joe? Amen. Genesis. Let's go to, uh, let's go back up to, um, verse 15. You ready? Mm -hmm. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withhold thy son, thy only son, that in blessing, I will bless thee, and in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed, as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Let me see what this took place here. Now, Abraham graduates or he, or he elevates by descending. Abraham at this point gets promotion from the Lord by changing or not necessarily changing but adding another element to his, to his fight. God now instructs him to not start fighting in the earth. He tells him here, the test was about Abraham bringing his son to him, his only son. Meaning the thing that I gave you that you won in the heavenlies, when you fought in the heavenlies, and you told them what I said, yeah. now for him to last in the earth, I need you to not tell the earth what's going on. Mm -hmm. I hope y'all seen this now. Because a lot of us think that we're supposed to pray to the heavenly and stay there. Right. But every one of us came from the dust of the earth. Right. Amen? Amen? Because from that dust we came from, we're going to return to it, right? And that scripture? Yes. And God tells us to go in and possess what? The land, right? So when I go in and possess the land, I'm technically I'm going in and possessing me, right? Uh -huh. So, he tells Abraham here in verse 17, he says that in blessing I will bless thee, and he multiplied, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of enemy. What you have to understand that if we got revelation in Genesis 15 that he's going to tell the stars and also count the stars and he's now telling him again that to, to go remember them stars and look at that, uh, that sand again, I now have to keep the correlation that I'm not supposed to go count the sand, but I also got to go talk to the sand. Amen? So I said, I'm going to talk to my land. To to my land. The, earth the earth is the fullness of God. God. Right? right? All of it, right? All the whole earth, right? Including me, right? 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 So God is commanding me not to just speak to the principalities, but also speak to the earth. Amen? Amen. Because I am to under I can understand that whatever is released from the heavenly has been released to the earth, right? Because the Bible tells me that thy kingdom come, thy will be done both in heaven and in the earth, right? So whose job is to put it in, to make it manifest in the earth? My job. Amen. It's my job. My job is to, is, 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 is to make the earth of um, you um, fruit. It's my job. Amen. It's my job. It's my job. 
So he had he had, he had enough duty to do. He had to now relate to his sons, his grandsons. He had to tell the earth that look, you saying, you 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 seashore, you ground, you my son is multiplying just like you are. As much as I can see you, that everybody told um, 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 Joshua, he told Moses, every place the soil your foot should tread upon, I give it to you. And if you ever walk in and go get land, you can't just go walk the land to my brother. No, no, baby. You, when, when I go walk land, I'm a, every place, every place the soul my foot touches, he gives it to me. Obey, obey me, land. You got to obey me, the God that gave it to you. My foot, the Lord said, if my foot touched you, he'll give it to me. And you don't mind, not in Jesus' name. That's something I do. What? I'm trying to teach you what I've done to get what I have from him. We can't just think that when, when, when he speaks a word to us that we just got to sit back and just poof, magically happen. What's going to happen that way? So I went through times where I had to release the word to the heavenlies. And then I would get that to my, to my faith confession and I would walk the earth. I would speak to cars. In fact, when the person had me tell you how you told about to talk to the car, that's a natural thing. That was a principality. That was a natural thing. That was not a principality. Last I checked, a car is made from either fiberglass or steel or iron, right? right. Came from the earth, correct? Right? right. right? right. Uh -huh. So well, am I preaching to the principality or to the earth now? To the earth. Right. You've got to have the balance of both. Amen. You want to see things change? You've got to have the balance of both in your heart. You gotta allow the Holy Spirit to minister through you to both elements. The third element is talking to, the, to God in the heavens, in, 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 in the throne of heaven. We do that consistently. You know how? We have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. Amen. Stand to your feet. I pray that this message was simple enough to encourage you today to arrive and to awaken into what God has said to you, has called you to do. How many want, want to believe God for the impossible this year? Amen. Let me check it for you. How many of you receive the impossible from God right now? Amen. And all you receive the impossible, you got to believe the impossible. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yes. As we were making those steps, I saw something in the spirit, and this is where we mess, where we mess up at. You said, you walk through the word, right? Come the word. C O M E. When he finished with the word, come, what happened? He stopped. He stopped and he lost focus on the word as that little word talked, right? And that's what happens when we think the word is over or the word has, has stopped. We stop and we focus on the chaos or whatever has messed up. But what we should have done, what Peter should have done, continue to walk on the word by saying, come. Amen. Come. Keep repeating that same word. Same word. Come. Amen. Chaos. I don't see no more. Come. I got to repeat. Just like what he taught Peter. Same word. I got to repeat the same word. Amen. And if Peter would have done that and, and not looked at, oh, the wind. The wind, yeah. the waves, the problems, the situation, all that music. Ah, oh, I could come. Amen. Oh, you know I caught that. Seems like I hadn't got there yet. Keep what am I going to do? Keep on. He didn't change the word. That was good. That was good. He didn't change the word. He kept the same word. And, and, and what, what left most of us? He kept going to God for another word. And what was God going to tell him? I told you to go in because that's what I already given you. Right? But right? yeah. well, God, if you give me grace, I gave you grace. But well, God, if you give yeah. He never changed his word. Because the same thing he told Moses, he told Joshua. Did he change it? No, he didn't change it. Did you not say that? Please. It says also, it says, in, in, he said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, by myself. And himself, the word, they are one. But he still, his word, he hasn't changed. Still going back. He didn't have to help with it, y'all. No. But he's giving it all to us. He's giving it all to us. He's giving it all. Okay. Thank you for that.
that good stuff, that real good stuff. It is what it is. It is what it is now. Jesus loves me, yes I know. Oh, the Bible tells me so. Thank you, God. 
wonderful blessings upon blessings upon blessings for ours. Amen? Amen. Leave out here today being assured that you and I, the entire of the nation, we're in a place now where we will continue to be blessed. The grace of God, the favor of God, doors will open on your own heart and gates will let you know. Walk in this grace. Confess this grace. Receive this grace. Show forth his glory in the earth. God bless you. Amen.